All right, drop the mic. PTM, what up? We're coming to you presented by Props.Cash for our first NFL podcast ever. This one will be just for one game, Thursday Night Football. I see you're uh, ready to rock, Dave. Yes, I, uh, I would like to say that I'm going to be unbiased, impartial for today's show, but being a Chiefs fan, um, <laughs> I'm certainly not you sure about this uh, unbiased uh, stuff here. I don't know. Yeah, no, it's going to yeah. be bad. It's going to be bad. Um, <laughs> good thing, good uh, but, thing the, the data kind of backs some Chiefs over, so I think uh, you might be okay. Yeah, but listen, I, with all that said, I've seen a lot of Chiefs games in my life, so I know, I know what they're good at, and I know what they're not good at, so hopefully that helps with uh, some of my picks today. Yes, yes. So this is exciting. This is exciting. Had a nice night in WNBA last night. Um, so that was good. That's a nice, uh, leads us into a nice, uh, nice day today with some nice uh, success last night. So uh, can we talk know. about that real quick, though? I mean, we had yeah, a, a, sure. a four, a four leg parlay going for which we never do, right? Never. It was the first one ever, I think. Yeah, right. So yeah. we tried it out. And we nailed all three picks on the uh, on the Liberty side. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and Arike uh, Agumbawale, who had uh, a 21 and a half point line had 15 points at halftime and didn't clear. So yeah, um, that's why that's why we mostly stick with the straight picks. But uh, but I think that was that was a little fun. So we'll do that every once in a while. See yeah. if we can hit yeah. it. Yeah, that was good. You think uh, that that certainly uh, that pace seemed uh, good to go. But uh, you know that she was our least favorite. The only reason she ended up in there is because you can't have uh, couldn't have all players from one team. So uh, she she ended up as the fourth leg of that parlay. But uh, that's what you can also get insurance for. So uh, maybe next sure. time that's what we'll do. Next next time we'll be less greedy. <laughs> um, all right, so let's talk about football, right? We'll put the basketball to the side for a minute. Let's talk yes. about some football. Um, really? So like like you said, preseason's over. First game is starting up this Thursday. Um, we got Detroit at Kansas City. And Detroit was 9-8 and eight last year. So they had, you know, kind of a, I would say, a pretty good bounce back year compared to the prior um, years. Um, and bounce Casey was... A bounce back history or something, you want to call it yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and KC was KC, right? KC went fourteen yeah. and three on the season, regular season, won the, uh, the Super Bowl despite having uh, an injured quarterback. So mm. they just they just are KC. Um, line, I think that on this game started out maybe at like minus six, minus six and a half. Yeah. Uh, with the news that Kelsey is likely not going to play, it's dropped all the way down to minus four and a half uh, on some sites this morning. Uh, DK mm-hmm. being one of them. Total, you can find anywhere between 52 to 52 and a half points. So it's going to be decent scoring in this game Mm -hmm. and uh, and supposedly a tight one. Yeah, I think uh, Kelsey almost definitely is out. Uh, Only other major news I think we're waiting on is Chris Jones. I don't think that's confirmed one way or the other yet. If he's playing or not. Any any news? Yeah, I just read an article. Um, I mean, Chris Jones is a holdout situation, so it's not an injury. Um, He's basically looking for something like $30 million a year. Chiefs aren't aren't really the type of team that overpays. Um, yeah. So that situation probably won't work itself out in the next, uh, you know, thirty six hours or so. Mm-hmm. But um, but I do think uh, I do think uh, he'll be back at some point this season. That's my guess. Yeah, I think so. So let, let's um, let's let's assume that he's out, and that certainly has a big uh, impact on the Chiefs' rush defense, which is obviously going to open things up for, um, you know, for the the Detroit offense to potentially rush more, throw more, yeah. whatever. So yeah. keep that in mind. All right. Yep. All right. All right. Cool. So let's start. How do we want to with, do this? Yeah. Let's start uh, positionally, right? Like this is um, one game, so we'll just cover all all three major yeah. positions uh, on the offensive side, and then we'll uh, we'll see if you have any other comments. Sounds good. All right. Sounds good. Let's do it. All right. So let's start with the uh, the head dogs um, quarterbacks. We got Mahomes and Goff, right? So I know you were you were big on Jared Goff for the um, uh, preseason for the preseason. Yeah, this was a season uh, long. Uh, yeah. Props. Yes. The, yeah. Season long props. Um, but yeah, in this one, we got, uh, Mahomes at 298.5 yards is his yep. line and Goff is, uh, at 259.5. So there's still, uh, some disparity from book to book. Um, so definitely shop around those. I think were the lowest lines available out there, but you could see some books as high as like 10 yard differences. So definitely shop around. Um, all right. So tell me what you're thinking about Mahomes. All right. So, um, so I kind of looked at, I think this will, maybe we'll do, um, maybe we'll do quarterbacks and then receivers, because I, I think a lot of the, the, the data I'm going to give out right now, I think kind of goes, it covers both of those positions, uh, kind of uh, looking at, at uh, opportunities to target uh, uh, passing yards slash receiving yards. Um, so uh, starting off, the Detroit defense was, was uh, although you did start this off saying they had a bounce back nine and eight season, they were, they were horrific defensively. Um, yes, like, both. both. Uh, both on the passing game and rushing game, right? They just gave yes. up, you know, yards everywhere. Yes. So 
uh, more so, I would say more so receiving wise. Um, so uh, they were the number one, their defense was the number one, uh, allowed the number one highest depth of target at almost uh, 10 yards per target. Uh, for reference, uh, Casey was kind of middle of the pack at 7.2. Uh, and on the low end, you had the Arizona Cardinals at 5.7. Um, so almost, almost half there. Um, they were number one in air yards per attempt at five. Uh, KC was number 10 at 4.1. Arizona was the low at two and a half. So also double uh, what, Arizona, what, the, what the low uh, low team was. They were number two in total air yards allowed over the course of the season. They were number one in first downs allowed. Uh, KC, for reference, was middle of the pack at number 14 uh, at 337. Uh, and Washington was last at 287 first downs. I don't know if I said Detroit allowed 377 first downs last season. Um, they allowed the fifth most first downs by pass. Um, so another good place to target them. Uh, they were uh, seventh in blitz percentage. They blitzed the quarterback on 31.2% of their plays. Uh, I like to look at this uh, stat because obviously if the team's blitzing, you have more unguarded receivers. You have more opportunities for yards after catch because you have fewer receivers downfield beyond the line of scrimmage. Um, right. So I like that. Um, and then finally, my, my last little uh, uh, note here, they were number two in uh, QB hurries per drop back. Uh, so, you know, if they're going to, be forcing uh, Mahomes to get rid of the ball a little uh, uh, faster than he would like. But if there's anybody who can uh, make that work, it's uh, Mr. Patrick Mahomes. So uh, that is where I see uh, Detroit's defense. I see a lot of big opportunities for the Chiefs here. Is that uh, you're kind of seeing the same thing? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, you got the best quarterback in the league. Uh, that's undisputed. Yeah. Going up against an offense that um, definitely made some, a defense that definitely made some um, additions in the offseason to try to uh, address their holes. But I think they're still one of the weaker. Um, past defenses in the league. So I think this is going to be a pretty solid air attack for KC. So, um, yeah, so we got Mahomes at uh, 298.5 um, uh, yards. I think that's come down as low as like 285 in some places. Yeah, I have, yeah, I have 285 uh, on, on right. FanDuel. I see it. It's 287 at most books. FanDuel is actually the best, I think, right now at 285. Yeah, that's where I'm going. Right. So just think about that. The effect of Kelsey going out, you know, was about yeah. uh, 14 13, 14 yard uh, impact, um, yeah. which is pretty, pretty crazy for one, yeah. one player. Uh, Mahomes has gone over that line in 65% of his games last season, uh, regular season games, 75% of games at home. So we know Arrowhead is a, uh, is a real uh, home uh, field advantage. So I think yep. that's going to play a big part too. Um, you know, he, uh, his first game last year was against Arizona. He had 360 passing yards. Yeah. Uh, his first game in 2021, he had 337 passing yards. So yeah. tends to tends to come out of the gate uh, firing. The Chiefs also seem to be really good uh, offensively when they have a lot of time to prepare for games, mm -hmm. which is why they're so successful. You know, in that first playoff game of the season, usually. But I think off also the first, yeah, off the bye, the I mean, first game Andy, of the season. That's Andy Reid's uh, so, history, his whole career, right? Exactly. So Andy yeah. Reid's had a whole entire summer to prepare for this game. I think he's going to have lots of fun schemes that he runs, but. What do you think? Over under on the two ninety uh, two eighty five passing yards? Yeah, it's it's probably my favorite play of of <laughs> in this game. Um, like you said, uh, not they get off to a good start. Um, if you look at uh, like the first half, kind of the first half of the season, or like the first eleven games, he cleared in eight of his first eleven games. This line, whereas like as the season starts to tail off, you get a lot of injuries and stuff. That you know, a lot of things changed. But when people are healthy, coming out of the gates, you know that first. That first chunk of the season, he crushed it in, in uh, 8 of 11. So I love it uh, for him to do it again here. Uh, I think you mentioned 7 of 10 home games, 7 to whatever, 70, 75%. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I just uh, – I love this. I think this is a, a no-brainer even, uh, even if Kelsey doesn't play. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, yeah. It doesn't seem to matter, you know, what offensive weapons he has around him. No. He figures out how to use, use guys. Exactly. exactly. Um, all right. And then uh, I'll put you on the spot a little bit while we're on Mahomes. All right. Um, Longest passing, uh, you know, passing attempt uh, or completion, sorry, uh, uh -huh. 38, 38.5 yards. So that's not really available on a lot of books. I think it was at Caesars mm -hmm. right now. But yep. I know I know in the past we've loved that play. Yep. Um, he cleared that in 11 out of 17 games, uh, regular season games last year. Yep. You got a, an opinion on that one? Uh, yeah, it's a slam dunk, I think. I mean, there's no better. If you're going to look at matchups, which we love to do, right, and find, you know, find the best opportunities in the matchups, Detroit's jumping off the board at you. Number one in air yards per attempt. Number one in total air yards. So, uh, you know, who can, uh, who can uh, air it out? Uh, you know, he's one of the best in the league at it. So uh, I think this, that's a, that's a no-brainer. I can see a 40-plus see a yard uh, pass. No problem. Yeah, and that's the one where probably Kelsey doesn't really make that big of an impact because Kelsey's Great mostly point. like a 20-yard yep. guy. So, yep. um, yeah, I like that one. Certainly would like it more if Tyreek Hill was still on the team, but uh, 
but I, I still like it uh, with 11 of 17 hit rate. Yeah, he's got some other weapons there that can make that happen. Yeah, yeah he'll figure it out. All right, yeah. and then on, on the uh, uh, Lions side, we got Goff at, uh, what do you got, 259 uh, yards? Or 257, it... yeah. 257, all right, so that's yeah. come down a little bit. Um, he only had a 35% uh, hit rate around there last year. Um, and yeah, 25%. not great. 25% on the road, although if you look, he hugged that 250, 256 line a lot. So they're, they're pricing it right around there to make it difficult to yeah. choose. So I think this one's actually uh, tougher than it looks. Um, but again, the absence of uh, Chris Jones is certainly going to make uh, Goff's day a little easier. Yeah. Um, you know, I think the Chiefs defense is, what would you say, like middle of the pack, like, like you were saying? Yeah, yeah, they're kind of middle, but there are a couple, uh, the couple here that are popping out that uh, are even are better than middle. So, um, go ahead. Uh, yeah, you want me to go off on uh, golf here? Yeah, I think he's. Um, my gut is telling me that this is a great play uh, in this game here. Uh, so, I did, I did, uh, you know, getting into a little bit more of uh, some of the advanced uh, defensive metrics here, um, looking at air yard percentage and yards after completion percentage, which are which are inverse inversely re- related. We brought this up on one of the. Um, the uh you know the, the season long prop podcast so when you find somebody that's you know positive in both of these you know when you have a, a what should be an inverse uh correlation uh it's it, it opens your eyes a bit so there's only four teams that were in the top 10 in both air yard percentage and yards after completion percentage that was casey it was dallas philly and buffalo uh, a lot of high scoring teams uh in there um casey was number five in yards after completion per attempt number eight in yards after completion per completion um and uh, another one I thought was interesting, they were sick. They were sixth in missed tackles, uh, Casey's defense. Um, so I think this, uh, I think, like you said, it's going to be not super high scoring, but at 52 and a half, it's pretty good, pretty good total, total in the game. I think there'll be, uh, you know, a, a decent amount of points on the board. I think, uh, you know, uh, the, the Chiefs can do a lot offensively, which means the Lions are going to have to answer offensively and going to be, uh, you know, they're not going to be handing off the ball running down the clock. They're going to be trying to make plays and, and, and score. So I think uh, my gut is, is uh, the over on here. I, uh, I'd like to see a game before I really, uh, you know, uh, crush some, some Jared Goff uh, props. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, based on last year's defensive metrics, I think this is a great matchup for him here. Yeah, I agree. I, I yeah. mean, even just looking at the Chiefs in the preseason, they have – they have a lot of holes defensively, mm-hmm. and I think Goff uh, has some good weapons offensively. So, mm-hmm. and and his he's got good running backs, which we'll talk about in a second. So I think mm-hmm. uh, that's going to open up uh, some some opportunity for some deep ball um, uh, yeah. targets. So I think he'll get there. Um, I think it's pretty safe. Um, yeah. All right. So we, yeah. so we like both quarterbacks to go over. Um, I'll throw another curveball at you. Um, yeah. Jared Goff to throw an interception uh, plus one hundred for the over, minus one thirty one for the under. Again, this is only on uh, Caesars, um, uh-huh. but listen to this. So you, while you pull yeah. it up, um, it's, it's, we, we have the stat on uh, Prop Stock Dash, so you can take a look at the chart. But it's an interesting chart. His first uh, eight games of the season, he threw a pick in six of the eight games. His yeah. the rest of the season, he didn't throw a pick the entire yeah. season. So wow. that's um, that's interesting. So the question is, will he continue that trend, or will he come out of the gates uh, rusty again like last year? Yeah, my my inclination is for you know first game of the season. Not, not, not only like on the first Sunday, but like this weird Thursday game, which is always kind of weird uh, in general Thursday games. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, I, w- I would say that he throws a pick in this game. That would be my not my bad. Guess. You can get that at a plus one hundred. Yeah. Um, yeah. no, another uh, strategy, just to kind of give you guys some ideas, if you like a uh, an, a, an interception play, especially if it's a uh, an over at minus, uh, mm-hmm. you can also do kind of what we did in the NBA season. Wait, you know, uh, six minutes into the first quarter, mm. you know first second third possession most likely yeah. not going to be a, a pick in one of those because they'll start out running the ball a bit um and then and then the line as a live play will come down um so you might get a minus 130 at plus 100 um Great something call. like that so you could do that um but this one the over right now is, is plus 100 so if you like it play it now because it's uh it's good value yeah, great, great, uh, very sharp right there to, to uh, you know, a lot of the team, most teams come out, you know, scripted their first drive. So like, you know, yeah. chances of an interception, I don't know what the, the, the data on it is, but, you know, I feel like it's much, much uh, less on those uh, early drives. So uh, when everything's kind of more planned out and scripted. So yeah, great call. Yeah. And you lose nothing. If, if, if the guy throws a pick on his first drive, whatever. Okay. Yeah. You, you didn't place the bet. Yeah. So you move on and bet something else. Yeah. All right. So that's a quarterback situation. Um, you want to move to the wide receivers. Um, yeah. You know, I, I guess we got on the uh, Lions side, you got uh, Amon St. Brown, who's uh, an absolute stud there. And then you also got mm-hmm. um, uh, Marvin Jones uh, Jr. Is that who's the other um, yeah. uh, uh, wide receiver on that side? And then on the Chiefs, you got, or I guess, the top two there now with with Kelsey out of the lineup. You got Sky Moore, 
and uh, Valdez Scantling are kind of the, the two top targets there. And of course, mm-hmm. the uh, running backs are always in play to get some catches yes. on that side. All right. Yes. So, who do you like? Uh, let's start with the Lions side. All right. Um, good because that's the that's the play I have here. Um, so I like. Uh, <clears throat> so everyone's super high on uh, on uh, Gibbs. Uh, it's all I keep hearing about on every single uh, podcast and write up. You know, the guy hasn't. Uh, it reminds me very much of uh, Najee Harris uh, from uh, a couple of years ago. It's like all you heard of this guy's. You know, he's going to win the rushing title in his rookie year and blah blah blah. So um, I think while a lot of the attention is on him, I'm going to the other running back uh, that uh, they signed that came over from uh, from their division rival Bears. Um, I like Montgomery's over. It's such a small number, eleven and a half receiving yards. Uh, you'll find it at 12 and a half on most books. Uh, I, I think it's still good there. Um, so looking at his, at his season last year, um, he averaged two receptions per game. I think that probably continues here for a running back. Uh, that's good. But, and on those receptions, he averaged 8.3 yards after the catch. So if he averaged two receptions, right. And he averaged 8.3 yards after the catch. What do you, what do you have right there? You got 16 plus plus yards right there. Right. Yeah. What does he need? Yeah, 11 absolutely. and a half. Yeah, I mean, I think it's beautiful. He's done it. He did it in six of seven road games. Obviously, this was with the Bears, but just, uh, you know, we don't have much to look at. So we're kind of, you know, finding what we can. Six of seven road games last season. Um, I also like that he averaged 12 and a half yards on his longest reception, on each game's longest reception. So he could get that, you know, that was, that was his average. Or he could get it on, you know, on one of those two receptions that he's going he's gonna to have in this game. So that was, I like the Montgomery over 11 and a half receiving yards. It's minus uh, 118 on a, a DK, I believe. Very nice. I like that. Is is it controversial to say that Jared Goff is a better quarterback than Justin Fields from a, from a passing standpoint? Is that no. is that going to no I no don't right? think like, ruffle any feathers? Yeah. Okay. Good. No. Good. Because <laughs> you know, I mean, Goff is a four thousand yard guy, right? Like yeah, he's going to exactly. be near that near that line. So I I think he's yeah. getting an upgrade from a quarterback perspective, not yep. not holistically quarterback if you include the rushing, but from a passing perspective, he's moving into a yep. better throwing offense. Um, so I think that's 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 a good play. I think uh, Montgomery, if he did it last year consistently, I think uh, I think he'll have an even better shot here. Even though he's going to be competing for touches, um, yeah. But he was he, he was competing but, for touches in in Chicago as well. So he was there as well. And 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 not only that, y- yes, he's competing. But they also just they just signed him as a free agent. Like so, they're not going to like you know. Yes, they're high on their their draft pick as well in Gibbs. But like they just signed this guy to a three year contract. They're going to want to get their money for it. So he you know he's he's going to be out there. He's going to see a high snap uh, snap count. So. Yeah, I agree. I agree. That's kind of the way of the NFL now. Like, their teams are fairly content distributing, you know, the touches between their running backs. So, yeah, keep people um, fresh. Yeah. Exactly. All right, cool. So, that's uh, you got any other receiving plays um, on either side? On either side, um, I, I like that 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 uh, Valdez Scantling number at forty two and a half is kind of calling my name with all that yards after catch and blah 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 that we went through. So, I, I'd say that's the one. But I'll I'll leave it to you, Mister. Uh, Kansas City Chiefs expert to uh to to give us the the wide receiver pick that's going to go over. I, don't, I think I think <laughs> playing any wide receivers on the Chiefs side ever is like a bad play because you never it's know a bad who's going to. It's a bad exactly. play. Like, I, I don't think it's a good play to go over or under. I just think it, they're so inconsistent. Who catches the mm-hmm. ball on what game? So you know, Valdez Scant- Scantling, you can actually get for as low as thirty nine and a half. So that's wow. pretty good, especially if Kelsey doesn't play. So I would mm-hmm. say I'd play him over Sky Moore, who's at thirty. Uh, sorry, forty three and a half. Sky yeah. Moore, if I had to go over or under, I would actually go under on Sky Moore because he's he only crossed that in five percent of games, which is one game last year. <laughs> one game. Now he didn't get a lot of a lot of playing time. So if he's yeah. out there for, you know, half the snaps, um, he he could easily do that. And he's got he's got, you know, good speed. But again, I personally will lay off the Chiefs receivers. Yeah. Um if I have to make one receiver play, I'd go with uh Amon St. Brown. Um okay. Who, who was one of your favorite guys in the uh, preseason discussions, uh, his receiving yards line is, is high, right? I think it's a little high for him. Uh, I've seen yeah. it as, as high as 80.5. Uh, I've seen mm-hmm. it as low as 76.5. But I think both of those are very high numbers for him. Um, mm-hmm. I think even at 76.5, I think he had roughly a 25% hit rate last year, um, mm-hmm. which is pretty bad uh, to, to go for an over there. Um, what I like better is his um, six and a half receptions. Um, mm-hmm. You can get that at 50. He had a 56% hit rate. Um, and that's all about targets, which, yeah. which, you know, it's probably true for every receiver. But his is very clearly delineated between when he gets 10 targets in a game last year, mm-hmm. he was eight. He was eight for eight. Right. And that, wow. that's basically set, catching 70% of the balls if you're only if, if only 10 are thrown to you. But yeah, when he was less than 10 targets in the game, he was one for eight. So wow. eight for eight. With 10 targets, one for eight, under 10 targets. So the question is, do, do we think, you know, he'll have 10 targets this game? I think so. I think he's, he's, yeah. uh, 
I it think seems he's reasonable. Two, yeah, he's, he's the primary weapon on that offense. Yeah. So I think he's going to be uh, uh, Goff's going to be looking at him early and often. So I like that. Um, uh, and and Casey also gives up, even though they didn't give up a ton of yards uh, per game, they actually mm-hmm. gave up um, the third most uh, pass attempts and the fourth most completed passes as well. So that means. Mm-hmm. Not a lot of deep balls, but a lot of like short yardage passes, which is perfect for a reception play. So I yeah. like that uh, St. Brown. I'd stay away from his yards, but I'd go over on his receptions. The receptions, yeah. Usually people don't like those as much, uh, but you, I usually can't put the receptions into a parlay. So I know people usually like the uh, the yards, right? Because yard like yardage, you can put in, you can parlay it, but for some reason yeah. they usually don't let you do the receptions. Um, they but, did. Right. I, I checked this morning on Fanduel. Oh, yeah? They were allowing it. Yeah, on oh, Fanduel at least. Yeah. They, yeah. Um, That's so new, no? They, yeah. They, Especially, yeah, they weren't letting you do receptions, um, and they even let you do receptions and altered yards together for the same player. No way. Is, yeah, so <laughs> we're gonna have to find some correlations on that. Um, yeah, man. But yeah, I think he's, I think he's a slam dunk at seven receptions. So you just gotta find the yeah. book that has the best value on that one. Yeah. All right. All right. Sounds All right, cool. good. And then um, let's move over to back to the running backs. Right, you were talking a little bit about Montgomery. Let's stay on yep. the Lions side. Um, you got Jameer Gibbs coming from Alabama. 926 mm-hmm. yards at Alabama on 151 carries. So he was a little north of six yards carry in college. No idea how that translates to yeah. um, in, in the NFL. But I can tell you, I looked up Pacheco, who we'll probably talk yeah. about in a second. And his senior year at Rutgers, he had uh, 3.9 yards per carry. So uh, obviously, you know, yeah. Alabama is a, a different league than, <laughs> yeah. than Rutgers. But uh, but Jameer Gibbs is, is an elite guy. Just the question is, is he going to be elite now? Or is he going to take a half a season to get there or even a year? So what do you like? Uh, Gibbs was at 38.5 yards on DK. Montgomery, mm-hmm. I think, was as low as 51.5 yards. Do you like <clears> either of those? Uh, if I had to lean, I, I would lean with the veteran. I don't know. Just like I said, I, I kind of feel like when, when I, to like zig when everyone's zagging, I feel like with all the hype I've seen on Gibbs, I feel like, you know, the, 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 the value is probably uh, by Montgomery here. I do prefer the receiving yards, um, like, I, like I mentioned already. But, um, uh, yeah, I would lean. If I had to pick one of the two, I would take uh, Montgomery's rushing yard over uh, for Detroit. Yeah. Yeah, that was my play too. Um, I think Gibbs. I think they both might cross, to be honest with you. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I would go with Montgomery at the higher line, fifty-one point five. The other thing that's, I think, you know, just as a, a approach, I think it's good to also go to props that cash, use the um, attempts, uh, rushing attempts filters to kind of see where where the hit rates really improve for a player. So, mm-hmm. for example, Montgomery at fifty-one point five yards, you know, albeit on a different team, um, had a fifty-six percent hit rate last year. When you increase that to ten plus attempts in a game. He went yeah. up to seventy five percent hit rate, right? So the next thing mm-hmm. I look at is go go to the book and see what is the uh, the line for attempts for that same player. Montgomery mm-hmm. is projected to have twelve point five attempts in the game, right? So we're mm-hmm. saying mm-hmm. at 10, 10 attempts, he has a seventy five percent hit rate last year, and we're thinking he's going to have twelve plus twelve thirteen attempts in this game. Yeah. So I think that's you know those two data points are nice to kind of justify an overplay right there. So um, yep. so I'm I'm going Montgomery over fifty one and a half yards rushing yards. All right, good. I like it. All right. Um, that leads me into my guy, Mr. Pacheco. Um, and, and just talking about, you know, you, you, it was very, uh, very fitting that you just brought up the rush attempt filter because a guy like Pacheco, who had like a weird start to, the, to his, his career last year, you know, he has that first, you know, however many, the first six, seven games of the season, right? He had like minimal attempts in, in a lot of those games. So you can filter that. And once you go up to, you know, if he's got over eight rush attempts, seven, eight rush attempts, now all of a sudden those hit rates are looking really, really nice. Um, which I think will be the case here. Um, so his line also, you can find, it, I think, uh, 50 and a half. Um, so I like this matchup. So l- let's go back for well, one second and look at Detroit defensively here. A um, lot of really nice matchups uh, that we, we spoke about already receiving wise, not as, not as many rushing, but there's still a couple that were sticking out here. So they were number two overall in rush yards per attempt allowed at 5.2. Um, so that bodes well for uh, Kansas City uh, running backs here. Uh, and they were also fourth, Overall, in first downs allowed by Rush at 135 first downs allowed by uh, uh, Rush's last season. So I, uh, I like Pacheco here. Uh, he was 12th in Rush yards per attempt last season. You got to look wow. at those per attempts because, uh, yeah, because he'll be lower on the leaderboards for more of those uh, cumulative stats. Um, but when you look at attempts, 12th overall last season among running backs that qualify. Seventh in rushing success rate. Uh, overall amongst all running backs, really, really good. Um, the metrics for that are a little wonky. Won't get into it, but it's a good... Um, it's a good uh, uh, data point to look at. Um, and then just uh, historically, he cleared this line in uh, 10 of his last 12 games uh, and four of his last six home games. Um, so how, how do you feel? You, you high on Pacheco here? Yeah, it's my favorite play. All right. I, I, had it at All 50, right. I had it at 51 and a half rushing yards, but if you can find yeah. it at 50 and a half, even better. 
like you said, you did an eight um, attempt filter. I did a 10 attempt filter. Mm -hmm. um, he was 11 for 12 last year when he had 10 attempts. And he averaged 13.2 attempts in his last 10 games, along with 64.1 yeah. yards. Those are the last 10. Uh, uh, I don't remember if that included um, regular season and postseason, but regardless, um, he's, this guy's awesome. He's awesome. The only threat is the fact that he's got two other running backs on the team, um, mm -hmm. you know, in uh, Jarek McKinnon and mm -hmm. uh, Clyde Edwards-Alaire. So that's, you know, who knows? Like, CHE is a, is a big question mark because he was the guy yeah. at the start of last year. And then, you know, and even the year before, and a couple injuries have put him, uh, I think, third in the depth chart. So we'll see if he yeah. starts stealing some touches. But regardless, you talk about 10 attempts um, is what this yeah. guy needs to get there, right? He's going to get there. So, and dude, not um, only that, I'm looking, you know, what, with those 10 attempts, I mean, in those games where he had 10 plus attempts, he's clearing this line. He's averaging 74 yards, uh, rush yards in those, game, in those games. And he only needs 50, you know, whatever, to 50, 51. So, I mean, he's like, he's blowing it out when he has the opportunity. So, I, yeah, I love it. Yeah, I think he's got, he's got one of those like dynamic games where he can bust for a 20, 30 yard run but he also can drag the line with him and take a three-yard run and turn it into a six-yard run. And if you do that mm -hmm. consistently over and over again, you get, you get to 50 yards pretty, pretty quickly. So uh, yeah. I love Pacheco in this game. I think he's going to go from a 50-yard line to probably a 65-yard line in one week. So get this play in before uh, this goes up a lot because I think it's going to go up a lot. Yeah, it seems, seems that way. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> interesting on that note. Yeah. If you had to guess what Pacheco's line is, so FanDuel offers most rushing yards of the game. Um, they've got David Montgomery, they've got Pacheco, they've got Jameer Gibbs, uh, Jarek McKinnon, and Patrick Mahomes. Those are your five options. If you had to guess most what most rushing yards, yeah, okay. for the game. Yep. If you had to guess what Pacheco's value would be, plus what on that, what would you say? Ooh, uh, yeah, it was a little tough. What would his value be to have the most rushing yards? Let's say. Uh, Let's say plus uh, 250. All right. All right. So you think it's higher. It was plus 170. Okay. But still, uh, David Montgomery is plus 160. So uh, okay. and the, next, the next highest is Jameer Gibbs at plus 310. So it is possible Jameer Gibbs, you know, is the rookie stud and busts an 80-yard run and, yeah. and, and, and gets this one. But I think this at plus 170, that's pretty good value for Pacheco. So I is, would, yeah. I'm going to keep an eye on that one, see how that one moves, and I might play that one as well. Uh, in addition to him interesting 50, approach yeah i like that 50 yards so all right cool um do you have any other uh player props for this game no nope. i think that's uh that's everything from the notebook here yeah i think we're going to continue to monitor you know the situation with kelsey i certainly would have had a play on kelsey if he was in the game i think mm -hmm. his line was around 80 yards um so we'll keep an eye on, on him and if there's any news of him coming back um i think that will be uh an interesting ad that we can put out on uh, on x um my last question for you chiefs minus four and a half you like the over or uh, you'd like them to cover or, or you like them to. Um, I, I feel like in these uh, just based on how, like, you know, the last few seasons have gone since like, since we've been gambling and, and, and whatnot, like early in the season, I feel like it kind of uh, it pays to back the underdogs and take the points uh, in a lot of these. So I know, I know that this might, might pain you a little bit for me to say it, but I, I think I would take uh, Detroit on the points. Yeah, no, that's uh, doesn't pain me too much because um, I think you're, I think you're probably right. Um, I think the Chiefs either blow them out or mm -hmm. I think they win by three points. Is my mm -hmm. guess. So okay. what what I would suggest is if you want to play the game, maybe take the Chiefs minus two and a half um, mm -hmm. as an altered line, and then find one of these props that we said and, and pair it with that. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe even an altered down version of it. So you could probably do something like um, Mahomes uh, two hundred fifty passing yards, which is. Uh, you know, something that I always love uh, yeah, kind of yeah. using as And then as Chiefs base. minus two and a half. And Chiefs minus two and a half, something like that. I'm trying to see if I can uh, if I could do that live and just see what that um, what that gives us. If not, we'll uh, That seems we'll pretty uh, that seems pretty nice. Yeah, it seems pretty nice, right? So um, anyway, yeah, so that, that should put you kind of right in that um, that range. Yeah, two fifty is is minus three twenty, and then if you go to the game prop uh, I don't know. We'll put it together later. I got to find it, but I think something like that, you know, um, yeah. could be a good whatever approach. it is to get it to, you know, you get nice even money there. Um, yeah, that seems uh, that seems pretty good. So. Awesome. All right. Well, nice work. We got through our first NFL uh, podcast here, presented by Props Cash. So uh, we will uh, regroup after this. We'll get a couple uh, picks up that we like the most, and uh, we'll be back later this week for uh, the full Sunday slate to go down. Right. Yes, sir. All right. Let's make some money. <laughs>